watched just well, like my just like this show my asshole comes from the bowels of hell <laughs> sadly i couldn't find any documentaries on Charles. why not did you no i didn't look though oh but the only thing you can find is like the audiobook of book of the damned so i listened to a, about two hours of that today really but, the long book. but i read it i've listened to it before but yeah there was no um no documentaries on the guy that i could find anyway on youtube no none at all wow that is complete horseshit because i found seven documentaries documentaries <clears throat> Must be blocked here in the states because I couldn't find any, and I search. I search more than just YouTube too. I watched a YouTube video today about a gaming system that has like every single gaming system on it. Retron? No, I can't remember what it was. It's like it was like a tabletop version of, but it had everything like Nintendo, um, Sega, like C sixty four, Amiga. It would have to be huge. It, it's fucking, it's like massive, like the the scope of it, it's massive. I could, you could make one. If you had all the systems, you could just like make one. I don't want to make one, Steve. I want to buy one. Well, that, it would be, you know how much a Retron is? They're expensive. Oh. So Why do you need any retro games console? We have emulators and ROMs. <sighs> I don't know. Because Chris is a purist. That's right. I want it to be um... purist. Let me tell you. Let me tell you, Steve. There are two kinds of people. There are dirty console peasants, and there is the PC master race. And if you can play a game on the PC, then you should, because it's the way it was meant to be played. Probably got to put my headphones in. Hmm. That'd be a good idea, Steve. Since we've yeah, I was I was just talking since, to you but... since we've already started. I didn't. I I looked over. And uh, saw the um, saw the live button. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit. The, there is a live button, Steve. Yeah. Well, it I does, can't push it. It does tell you much like when you're in a radio studio when it says on air. Yeah, but it's a lot smaller than the on air button. The Steve. on air or the on air sign is like big and it flashes. This thing is just up in the corner. And I keep. We're on air. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But I didn't know. Because I was, you know, because you reading the news story. Because you shit. don't pay attention. Oh, I pay plenty of attention. Uh-huh. Not, not to anything that goes on here. <laughs> <laughs> you pay attention pay. to your eBay shit. Oh, man. I, yeah, of course I do. That's my no, living. Yeah, huh? yeah. I mean. I don't make any money doing this. Why would you pay any attention to this? Ugh. No, I'm with you, Steve. I'm with you, buddy. Yeah, I mean, well, I okay. actually, I actually, completely okay. Actually, did some research for the show this week. I know, and I didn't, which I is a, which is completely oh, like I'm it's, having a heart attack. And somebody <laughs> call an ambulance. This is like that episode no, gonna, of Star Trek where they fucking go into now. opposite Star Trek universe, and we have <laughs> mustaches. I got a goatee. Well, no, I already had. So, what am I clean shaven? Because I already have a goatee. <laughs> That's right. You're clean shaven. No, I have a goatee too, so that means we're both clean shaven. Oh shit! <laughs> we, we can't be the anti. You know, Forty and slip. Yeah, we can't unless we have a goatee. But we already have goatees, so what does that mean? That means that initially we are the anti Forty and slip. <laughs> <laughs> You're the so. <laughs> We are, we are the pieces of shit, Steve. How come they always have a goatee when they're evil? Because always. that's just the way it is. Goatee. Listen, hey, I was working at um, a place called Humpty Dumpty. For those of you who aren't aware, in the Humpty Northeast, Dumpty, uh, sat on a wall. In the Northeast, uh, out of the state of Maine, there used to be a company. It was Maine owned. It was Humpty Dumpty Potato Chips. It no longer mm -hmm. exists. Humpty Dumpty Potato Chips still exist. But the company in Maine does not exist anymore. Um, and I used to deliver for them. And there was a guy that worked in the warehouse. And I came in one morning to load my truck. And because I had a goatee, he came up to me. And this is exactly what he said. 
Are you the devil? <laughs> and how did you respond? I couldn't respond, Steve. <laughs> I was laughing my ass off so much. <laughs> I like the anti Spock, the, the evil Spock with the goatee. He was good. Yeah. Evil Spock's great. But then on like Superman, Bizarro Superman was like square and shit. He was he wasn't Bizarro Superman is like fucking retarded Superman. Yeah, I know. He's Am I allowed black. to say that? He doesn't live underwater. I know. He's not the opposite of Superman. Okay. What, 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 what do you, you mean? Say, what, do you mean what are you trying to that, say? I'm saying it's not the opposite of Superman. Bizarro Superman makes no sense, and I'm I vehemently oppose it. Oh. Bizarro Superman is is a good thing, and he doesn't have to be exactly opposite. Where does it say he has to be exactly opposite? Uh, in the comic. Oh, I've yes, read the yeah. comic actually. That's one of the ones. Well, that... So you so you're commenting on something you don't know anything about? No, no, I've read it. I've, I've read, read it. it. Listen, oh, Richard, he is much like Donnie in uh, the Big Lebowski. He comes oh, into the middle of a conversation like a child. Yeah. Shut the fuck up, Donnie. Brilliant. Yeah. I actually had my hands on the actual Bizarro Superman comic book. I, I and, thought you were going to say a fourteen-inch cock, but no, we're, I thought we were past that shit. <laughs> I'm fucking ready. <laughs> Five minutes into the show, and we're already. <laughs> I thought we were past all that shit, childish crap. Uh, I was going to say you said penis wrong, but no. All right, are we ready? Yeah, well, I was born. <laughs> <laughs> I love I, I love how fucking Steve's enthusiasm goes from way up to yeah yeah whatever Fuck it. <laughs> Steve we had such a good show last week well we're gonna no, have we another didn't. good one just we get are. on with it no we you didn't sure? you had a good show <laughs> <laughs> let's just fucking show get nice. that one wrapped up again. <laughs> <laughs> that's what this show is about. Uh, humor at others' expense just happened to be yours last week. It may just happen to be yours again every week from now on. <laughs> yeah, it worked we'll out see. well. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is the 40 and Slip, episode 40, Charles Fort in charge. Oh, Welcome. I see what you did there. Oh, do you now? Yeah. <laughs> special circle. 14 and yeah. Slip, <laughs> episode 14, <laughs> Charles Fort. I get yeah. it. Yeah. I get it. Ah. Sorry, go ahead. Ah. Ah. That makes a lot of sense. Five years of doing this shit, Steve, and we finally get around to talking <laughs> about the namesake of the fucking show. I'm sure we've mentioned him before. Oh, I'm sure we've mentioned him, but we've never talked about him. No. But uh, the the name of the show, The 40 and Slip, 40 and refers to... Uh, the genre of things that were talked about by one Charles Fort. I don't know much oh, else about the man. Fort. About the man, was he a British gentleman, Richard? No. Was he yeah. American? Yes. Oh. Okay. He was American. Yes. So we've so we've done something well. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. His his name was Charles Holy Fort. He was born in Albany. New York. And lived in lived in the Bronx most of his life. See, I did some research. You wow. read that off his wiki page. No, I didn't actually. <laughs> yes, you did. No, no. The Wikipedia page kind of sucks, so I had to go other places to find it. There's not a lot of information on the guy out there. I mean, yeah, he wrote a bunch of uh, books and shit, but there's not a lot of. I mean, I if couldn't find a bunch, a bunch of books. Of books Wait a minute. Shit. If he wrote a bunch of books and shit, Steve. Then that means there is a lot of information out there. Well, I mean, on the guy himself, there's not oh. a lot known about him. Oh, as far as he didn't have, I and mean, he was kind of a loner, and kind of like who's the other guy we talked about recently? Kind of like that guy, same same kind of person. You know, he, he was a loner. He didn't get along with people that well. He, Jim Fasano. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's the Tim, he's the Tim Fasano of. The Fortean world. No. Actually, he was more sort of the uh, what's his face from the ancient aliens. 
the Giorgio Sucolos? Yes, he was, because he's not saying it's aliens, Bigfoot, or ghosts, but... He just has questions? He just has questions, pretty much. Much like me. I think, actually, when I looked into the guy, I mean, what we do on this show is a lot like what he did. You kind of explore questions in a satirical manner, you know, and you're, you're kind of making fun of science and you're kind of making fun of the unknown, but nobody knows exactly what we really believe. <laughs> that kind of thing. Nobody really could tell whether Charles Fort really believed the, you know, forty in topics or not. Just be, by the way he wrote, it was kind of fun for him. Much like people aren't oh, sure if you're a flaming homosexual. No, or people are sure that I'm not. A heterosexual? I am completely heterosexual. Always have been. Maybe bisexual? No, no, unless I had to pay for sex. It's the only way I'd be bisexual, but I don't have to. Oh, pay for sex. Oh, See what I did? Just fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> Vintage Steve right there. Hey, well, it's an old joke. I'm sure you've all heard it several times. Mm, yeah, it's not yeah, like yeah. I just came up with that. I mean, my wit isn't that good. Yeah, mm. not even close to that good. Yeah, mm. I wish you'd just get a fucking rope and end it. Dear Christ. <sighs> so, Richard, you actually did some in-depth research on the wonderful Charles Fort. I did indeed. Wow. Uh, Richard and I were supposed to get together this week to uh, discuss this. That didn't happen. Chris bailed on me. Fucking Chris. That's yeah, great. No, right. <laughs> Turns up late today. Doesn't know the difference between off air and the expert. I mean, what's he for, really? Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> All right. So let's kick this off, shall we? Yeah. We go in depth into the life of the man that was Charles Fork. <clears throat> Go. Gather round the fires of the Fortean Slip, dear listeners, as we weave a tale of darkness and woe. A tale huh? of a man who was driven to insanity by his own genius. A man that had such an impact on our subject that not even Fallout 3 could have predicted it. The story of the man knows as Charles Ford. This world <laughs> the is fuck, the wait, who the of the fuck are you this? Wait, wait, who the fuck are you this week? <laughs> What is this fucking masterpiece theater? <laughs> can, can I, I am trying. Listen, listen. Our listeners are very, you know, not Stupid. not <laughs> not right in the head. There has to be something wrong that they choose. We in. have listeners that try to do a version of the show in the chat room. Yes, and the least it's we can do is make this hour before their inevitable suicide a little bit more entertaining. All right. Okay. Let's do it. Right. Oh, God, I pray for some of them to commit suicide <laughs> every fucking week. <sighs> right, so, Charles Especially Ford. the one with the beard. I have a beard. Anyway, continue. <laughs> huh. Well, well uh, Charles Fort was an early 20th century thing. I'd like, no, you know, wait a minute, stop for a second. You know, I would like to find out that Dean Cooper hung himself and his parrot is just sitting in his house picking out his fucking eyeballs as he lay dead on the floor. That isn't probably, even right, man. <laughs> it's probably his parrot that does all the talking in the chat room. <laughs> pecking at the keys. <laughs> right. We've been, we've been arguing with a fucking bird all this time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what you don't know is Dean... Dean Dean died six months ago. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, now wouldn't that be horrible if that were true? Cody's not just picking on parrots. <laughs> oh, come on now. Okay, back to Charles Ford. He was an early 20th century thinker and writer, often credited with inventing the supernatural or the paranormal by creating a neutral category for anomalous observations, discoveries, and experiences. Before Charles Ford, anomalies were typically explained away or else absorbed. I think he's going to take a shit. <laughs> I'm, gonna I'm fucking just curious, tell you. I'm curious I'm how long you. he's going to keep this up. <laughs> I'm going to kill you in your sleep, all right? I've been practicing. I've got this all written down, and you two are just ruining it. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> 
as you always obviously do. you have never paid attention to my relationships <laughs> yeah this, this has a, quite a knack of ruining things <laughs> right. yeah. go on right where was we yeah. on the shitter Right. Before <laughs> Charles fought, anomalies were typically explained away or itself absorbed into pre-existing explanatory frameworks that, like religion or mythology. Thanks to his efforts, they can now be set aside for further research, even if they're still often ignored in mainstream science. Yeah, see, I'd like to thank the Academy. That's it. No, no, I got more. Oh, he wrote oh ten books, although one was commercially published, The Outcast Manufactures, and it was an utter failure at the time. However, it would later go on to achieve cult status. After he unsuccessfully attempted to have other science fiction books published, he gave up on the genre altogether and instead focused on collecting data on erroneous and unexplained phenomena. From rains of frogs to UFOs and of out-of-place artifacts, he eventually compiled all of these works into a you single compiled? book. Compiled, you scurvy cunt. <laughs> into a single book with the help of a fellow author called Theodore Dressier. Publish these in the Book of the Damned. Teddy Ruxpin? Your mom, seriously. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> because it... <laughs> So cold because it was full of what he called damn data, by which he meant it was ignored or rejected by science. Although he would go on to write three more books after this, only the book of the damned really got any traction. Only the buck of the damned? I will fucking face fuck you, you blue hat wearing stoner fuck. Was that written down too? Whatever what happened, well what yeah, happened to Teddy Ruxpin? <laughs> Did he become like a haunted doll? Although he would go on to write three more books after this, only the Book of the Damned really got any traction or recognition. A skeptical man by nature, Charles never actually committed to any paranormal or alien explanation for the events he reported on, but simply offered them up as a possible solution for these events. He famously preferred to leave things unexplained. Mm. 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 He attracted to the attention of notable figures such as screenwriter Ben Hacht, novelist Booth Tarkington, Alexander Woolcott, and Tiffany Thaler. Together, these men founded the Fortean Society in January of 1931. Who names her son Tiffany? I don't know. Someone that wanted him to grow up to be a girl. <laughs> I guess. Go on. Oh, Who the names their son Adam. still? <sighs> I don't know. Go on, Richard. Okay. <laughs> Fort was invited to the inaugural event, but passed on the presidential job of running it. Apparently, he had a very anti-authority streak. Still, the society still exists today. Fort died in 1932. It's believed of leukemia, but he, it's unknown what he died Did he of. sail the As ocean blue? <laughs> yeah, he did actually. He was a world explorer. See? He wanted to be a naturalist when he was a boy. So he traveled to London, Scotland, Wales, Europe, most of America in search of seashells and minerals and animals. Did he wear a captain's down. outfit? And was he trying to escape uh, prosecution for tax evasion? <laughs> did he create a religion? I no. think he did, in a way. Sort of. But he refused help from doctors, so it is unknown for sure what he died of, but it is believed it is leukemia. He preferred to complete his work, and his last dying breath penned his final book, which no one actually read, so that was a waste of time. <laughs> his short career and mediocre literary his short career and mediocre literary contribution had more effect on popular thought than many more famous and well-known authors. It is believed he invented the paranormal as a concept of scientific analysis. Before Charles Ford, anomalous events such as lights in the sky and ghosts were just, you know, strange things that happened. 
were more likely to be considered religious omens than set aside for future research. What Fort did was create a neutral category for such things as UFOs, ghosts, cryptids, and so on. He enabled them to be compared <coughs> as a whole body Sorry. of scientific data. Some of the phenomenon What's he observed data? has... Oh, I will fucking... God, I'm just trying to, you said data several times, and I'm trying to figure you out. Know you know how it. hard it is to keep that voice going, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> and then you fucking interrupt me mid flow, yes. and it just throws me off. Exactly. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that everyone thinks you're a cowboy hat wearing, spam eating dipshit, but don't take it out on me, all right? No, everybody likes he's me. I'm he's adorable. kind of adopting the accent and his, the way he's talking <laughs> to you, Steve. I know. I'm adorable, Richard. Don't everybody thinks I'm like this, you know, awesome guy? I, they're right, of course. Everybody thinks you're a pussy whipped asshole. No, only you think that. Oh, okay. Got any more? Uh, I heard. Jokes. I heard. I heard one of the best jokes I've heard in a long time today. Uh oh. And Do it was, we want to hear it? Is it appropriate for this show? It's, it it goes back to what I just said. So. Oh. It was from the late Greg Giraldo. Hmm. Um, he's, uh, I've been so sad since he's been gone. He's like not, the not sure one of the are. greatest comedians that probably ever lived at this point. And he Geraldo? said, uh, Giraldo, not Geraldo, Giraldo. Hmm. And on one of his comedy specials, he said, there are more whipped men on television now than there were on the Amistad. <clears throat> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> Seriously, Steve. What's the Amistad? Oh my good God. I mean, I'm not a historian or anything. Oh my it sounds like God. some sort of slave ship or something. Yes, Steve. Am I right? Yes. Well, I mean, I could infer it from what you said, but I wasn't 100% positive. Yes, Steve. Ugh. <sighs> Is that all you got on Mr. Fort there, Richard? No, I've got more. Are you fucking pieces of putrid, discarded rectum finished? Can I finish now? Sure. He's got all these right. incidents written down. He's not that quick-witted. No, I'm literally pulling them off. I'm in a really spectacularly good mood tonight. Wow. Oh We're, we'll, right. we'll try to ruin that. Yes, I know you will. <laughs> <laughs> you bastards. Right. Are you going to do the voice again? Come on. <laughs> are you Some ever gonna are you gonna ever move away from the fucking speedway some of the phenomenon he observed have since inspired their own disi disciplines such as a search for bigfoot the paranormal society some have become recognized as legitimate phenomenon wait a, for minute, example, wait a minute some of them uh decided to become assholes and search for bigfoot yeah pretty much oh for yeah. example Bull lightning was thought to be old wives' tales, but now is known to exist. And Charles Fort was the first man to attribute this to a natural phenomenon. Fort was the first man to attribute lights in the sky to alien visitors, and also the first to investigate hauntings without assuming a theological explanation. Mm -hmm. Some of the theories he had put forth have long since disproven. But most of the things he talked about remain unexplained and still research to this very day. And here on the 40th slip, we remember him as a man who gave a name to the mysterious and unexplained and brought it into the mainstream so it could be studied and discovered. Charles Fort, a legend born. <laughs> wow. <laughs> How many hours did you spend on that shit? <laughs> Far too many. <laughs> I don't think. I, I think we should just end the show now. At this point, I was, I was <laughs> that would be funny if you actually did. <laughs> this is the footage. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're, how can we? Uh, how can well, we how, where do you go, Where do you go from there? Uh, we, where, where people's you know? like a, a, a literal legend, though. I mean, to oh, us, yeah. to people He's like a legend us, that nobody history. knows about. Well, uh, they do. You ask, no, no, you ask any fucking person on the street who is Charles Fort, and I guarantee you, more times than not, you will hear, "Huh?" 
Well, even people in the, uh, you know, paranormal community and Bigfoot community, and they don't know who he was. No. Do you know how many people have asked me what the fuck Fordian means? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I get it all the time. And they think it's when I when somebody says, "Oh, I, I tell them I do a podcast," and I tell them the name, they're like, 14? No, it's not fucking fourteen. Forty in, you know, yeah. like Charles Fort. Who? Who? Yeah. Well, yeah. we owe a lot to the guy. I mean, without without him, he wouldn't. We, I mean, we'd probably still talk about this shit, but not nearly as much. No. And we wouldn't have a name for our show. So, well, we would. It just wouldn't be forty. <laughs> Yeah, I find it fascinating though that his contemporaries, the people that worked with him, his publisher and all that, they actually um, created the first Fortean uh, get together group, whatever, while he was still alive. Fortean Society. Yeah, the Fortean Society. They created that while he was still alive. He's gonna hold on to that voice. And then they, and then he, they wanted him to be president, and he's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> Why are you creating this stupid? I mean, to him, it was all, I think it was more fun for him than anything. I don't think he really took a lot of this seriously. No, it is because out of the three of us, he mostly identifies with Chris, who has a strong anti authority streak in him, who doesn't like laws or uh, police or anything like that. And that is why he dis. Or his on the producer. Job. Or his producer. Oh, <laughs> fuck your. <man. laughs> Well, well, that's true. Uh, they said that with the biography that I read that he was like beaten as a child, so by his dad, hated his dad, and that's why you know part of the reason why he left when he was eighteen to go travel the world is to get away from that shit. And so from that, he always was an anti-authoritarian. He didn't like authority at all. And so by him picking on science. It was kind of his way of getting back at shit, but I don't think his dad was a scientist, but I don't know why he chose that. But. And I think he just found the subjects fascinating, you know? Well, he bounced around a lot from job to job. It's clear he had no real purpose or direction other than writing, and that was his true passion. And the Book of the Damned was his way of expressing his desire to scientifically research these unexplained phenomena. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> I don't know that I can get over the voice, though. That's the thing. Is that what he sounded like? You think? No. You think he was as passionate as Richard is? No. No, I just don't. No, I, know I think he was. I think he was probably now. as uninterested as you and I. <laughs> no, I actually. I mean, I I listened to a bunch of the Book of the Dam today. About two hours. It's a seven-hour uh, audio book if you listen to it. Uh, it's a long a, book. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of shit. But he talks a lot about um, not. He doesn't believe in reality. I mean, nothing is real, but nothing is fake. It's all the same. Everything is the same, and you and I are the same as uh, the fish in the sea. I mean, we're made out of the same stuff. So, where do you draw lines and things like that? It was. It was it's pretty fascinating his point of view, although sometimes ver very bizarre. But it was it was cool stuff to listen to. But I got through about two hours of it, and mostly about the uh, blood rains and fish falling from the sky and frogs and shit like that. And he was, uh, I think, what he really wanted people to do is expand. Instead of just believing what you're told, go out and look for yourself. I think that was his whole point of view. Exactly, he is expanding on his anti-authority streak. He is telling people to look for their own answers. Don't accept what society tells you. Mm -hmm. And that is the real purpose behind Fortean explanations. <laughs> Today, a young man on acid realized that all matter is merely energy condensed to a slow vibration, that we are all one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively. There's no such thing as death. Life is only a dream, and we are the imagination of ourselves. Here's Tom with the weather. <laughs> Pretty much. I... Chris Thank Tom. you. Thank you, Bill Hicks. I want to know who Tom is. The weatherman. Well, yeah. Hmm. <sighs> Steve, someday you'll fucking catch up. That's all I got to say. No, I will not. 
someday. I'm like the child's fort of this show. I don't. I have no respect for anything. <laughs> authority, and you, you are my authority figure, so I can't respect anything. <laughs> See, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. It just didn't come out right. I don't know where. I had it all, you know, there. thought out in my mind <clears throat> and shit. But when it came out my mouth, it just spilled out wrong. Much like semen. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you said, "Well, yeah, no." Oh, no. <laughs> <sighs> I had this whole thing about Charles Ford I was going to talk about, but Richard ruined it with the voice, and you ruined it with the crude jokes. What else am I supposed to do? I don't know. No, by all means, Steve, the floor is yours. I will. Yeah. No, I'm done. Steve's done. Steve's done because I did a voice and you made jokes. Yeah. Is that all it took to break Steve? I'm sure it didn't take that much. <laughs> to think of all the time we wasted on 14 inch hog jokes. And all yeah. we had to do was do a stupid voice. <laughs> and now most people think that 14 inch hog is what we're talking about when we say the 40 and slip. <laughs> 40 and inch hog. There we go. <laughs> No, I found I found the guy fascinating, to be honest with you, and and a lot of his ideals are kind of the same as what we kind of promote on this show. You know, don't just believe it because somebody told you. Uh, look into it a little bit deeper, and maybe sometimes, maybe just maybe, there is a a paranormal type explanation to something, but generally, it's probably not. I think that's what I got mostly from him. Mm. They just told you guys to have an open mind and look for your own answers. And yeah. that's something I respect. But he did it with satire a lot. I mean, if you read that shit, you can tell. I mean, he was talking about some sort of the rains and how they they were red and they were gelatinous. There was gelatinous rains. And it, maybe the whole sky is gelatinous. You know, and, and you could tell that he was just kind of throwing shit fun. out there, just making yeah. fun of some of it but also being serious at the same time and, and saying, hey, don't just believe it because I've put this on paper. Go look. Well, you know, if you've actually of... read the Book of the Damned, a lot of it is what we would call these days clickbait. You know, oh, it's yeah. a lot of sensationalized stuff. But, you know, he did it first, so. And people think that that shit's new. Yeah. And it's not. It's not. <clears throat> You know, he, I, I posted a I posted a cartoon this week. It was this, uh, you know, these ancient people, and one of them was like carving shit on a wall. And he's like, "What does that mean?" He's like, "I don't know," but people will be scratching their heads over it fucking years from now, making all kinds of fucking weird claims. And it's it and therein lies the the beauty of what we say on this show is that bullshit has always been around. Always. And what, what cracks me up is like, and I, I always go to Ancient Aliens because the, the show cracks me up. I love the show because I love I loved the look at ancient civilizations. But at the same time, you constantly hear these people that are on the show saying that our ancestors depicted what they saw. Does that mean fucking Stephen King saw a fucking clown that ate kids? Right. I mean, seriously, people, how fucking dumb can you be? Yeah, wh when does the time come that the stuff that we write nowadays are, like you said, Stephen King, that people are going to look back that, on that in history and not realize that was just a, a story that he they'll, made up? Yeah, like they'll be looking for Castle Rock. Yeah. Which is a good show, by the way. Have you watched any of that? I actually have not started watching Castle Rock yet. I, it's on my list. It is interesting. I've been we've watched every episode so far. It's yeah, I, it's a good show. It's on my list of shit to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, how, where, where is that line? You know, and you just said it pretty pretty perfectly. Holy no, I did something right. Yeah, as a matter of fact, Steve, you did. You know, only by accident. Let's yeah, just, when it was. When does it happen that, you know, like Dean Koontz is seen as, you know, uh, has was writing shit that he saw, you know, this is, there is such a thing as fiction. And these people seem to think that fiction is a new construct. It's not. Stories no, have happened for yeah. centuries. 
and and then they're repeated and repeated and then things get changed and then they become more bizarre and more outrageous and you know that kind of thing and and and, and yes we, i'm a bit i'm a big proponent of the fact that ancient civilizations had some type of technology that we don't understand that they had you know and i i you know i i totally subscribe to the belief that we are a, a species with amnesia well here's and the that, thing that we, we write thought- we write technical manuals and things like that based on the equipment that we're using and do things like that but when that equipment becomes obsolete that stuff goes away i mean yeah a few remnants might remain and i'm assuming they did the same sort of thing okay we're moving out from this and now we're doing this new thing so let's write this new thing down and so that technology got lost over time any anything that they would have had would have got lost over time because they didn't need it anymore and then you've no, got and then you've got guys like uh, I can't think of the name of the gentleman, but the the man who built the coral castle. You know, and the he was able to build that entire thing by himself. Right. Lifting these insane stones all by himself in the middle of the night. And there was probably no real magic about it or any, you know, he just no, he said he, he said it. he knew how the technology worked, how they did it. You know, but but peop, you know, then you go back to the ancient aliens folks. They they seem to think that it was some type of alien technology. Well, not well, necessarily. It makes, it makes for a good story. Well, yeah. fuck yeah. So who's Question the one the So who's show. the one making up the stories? Us <laughs> or the fucking ancient aliens guys? Question, I agree. question from the, the chat room. Yeah. Do you guys agree with Robert Witch's assessment of the Sphinx erosion and dating? And you mean Robert, Robert Shock. Shock? Yeah, that guy. Yes, I absolutely do. I listened to um, uh, Robert Shock's interview with Joe Rogan recently, which if no one has has listened to it, they should sit down and really pay attention to it. Robert Shock um, has been on Ancient Aliens quite a few times. However, um, he does not subscribe to the Ancient Aliens theory. Uh, he's been used kind of as um, to uh, present this uh, these theories that he has in relation to these other guys, ancient aliens theories. So but point, yes, I, I, I totally buy into the Robert Shock uh, belief that the uh, erosion on the Sphinx was due to rainfall, which hasn't happened in the um, in that section of Egypt for a lot longer than what they assume or what the uh, archaeologists have put the Sphinx's date at. Um. And and his his uh, the science behind what he says, I think, is very sound. I've I've seen the guy on uh, television before talking about it, and I he made a he made a valid point. You know, he made a lot of valid points about the the dating and stuff. So yeah, I agree with. Him. I well, mean, I agree with the concept anyway. And he's been and he's been demonized by Egyptologists. Well, because they they have a certain theory that they have to live by. I mean, it's just like anything else. You it's have, a cult. It, it, it's a belief. Yeah, it's a fucking it's a cult. belief system. Egyptologists have to maintain their <coughs> theories, you know. And when somebody comes along to challenge that theory, uh, they're going to be upset, yeah. whether they're right or wrong. You know, it's, it's like any. I mean, it's kind of like a religion, if you think about it. Oh, absolutely. Is no. there anything, some theory Chris does find plausible from ancient aliens? Most of the show is silly. What does Chris find reasonable? That Giorgio Sukalos uses a lot of fucking hairnet. <laughs> or aquanet. Or whatever the fuck that goddamn hairspray is. <laughs> um, is there a theory that I find plausible out of ancient aliens? I think that the... I do think that the ancient cultures were intertwined in some way. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think that there was um, not a, 
I hate to use the word global network, um, but I do think that they were interconnected um, more so than archaeologists or historians would like us to believe. Um, I don't think that they all built pyramids because they were all given the same direction. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I think it was just an easy structure to make. Well, if you look back into history and artifacts that have been found on several continents, and including this one, if you go and look at the arrowheads that were found on the East Coast, you can see that they're very similar in design to what was done over there uh, on the uh, in England or, or the UK. And that's because I think that they were a lot farther advanced in travel than we ever gave them credit for back in the day. Oh, yeah. So they were able to traverse the ocean. Christopher Columbus was not the first to discover the New World, obviously. The Vikings were before him, and who who knows who was before that. But and, it's, and it's very possible that they had, um, for instance, like some type of hot air balloon travel. Could be, sure. You know, I, that's not a stretch to think that they could have done shit like that. So when they say, you know, well, they were, you know, the the Nazca lines and all these things that these images that were created on the ground could only be seen from the air and there was no air travel. Well, it's completely possible. It's completely possible. And, and I don't and those those items would have been made out of natural substances like uh, animal skins and things like which would have eroded or gone away over time. And so yeah. we wouldn't have any idea that those things still existed. Exactly. So there's a lot of things that we wouldn't know, even because it maybe it didn't get written down on a cave wall somewhere, you know? I mean, how many things were written down, but how many things weren't? I'm guessing exactly. by far more things weren't because, I mean, I don't sit here and scroll everything I do every day. Neither do you. Nobody does. And I'm guessing they didn't back then. Now, they did put some things down, but they didn't put everything down. Who's going to know who Snooky was 10 years from or uh, 200 years from now, nobody, because hopefully nobody. I'm just saying, yeah. there's things that get lost because we either want to forget it or it didn't get written down or it just disappeared over time. Even, even in recent history, there's a lot of things like, uh, I was reading today about Solomon Spalding, which was a, a guy from the town that I live in here. And he, they, a lot of people think he wrote the Book of Mormon and then Joseph Smith stole it and all this bullshit. And, uh, but his manuscript is still missing. And that was only in the 1800s, you know, so things go missing. It happens. Look at the guy that invented the uh, motion picture camera. What about him? Well, he disappeared into somewhat mysterious circumstances. But his camera still existed. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of not the same thing. Yeah, but no one knows his name. Uh, Everyone knows uh, Edison, uh, but nobody knows. I see what you're saying. Right. And well, obviously people get credit for shit they didn't do. Edison. Or, or shit that they improved on but didn't invent. That kind of thing, sure. But history is written by the winner. So <laughs> no matter what happens... The winner is going to be the one who writes it. Winner, winner, chicken dinner? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I, I think if we went back on the history of the United States, if you if you read a history book from the Native American perspective, it's going to be a whole different story than, you know, the European perspective. Obviously. Well, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> They're quite bitter about that, Steve. Well, as they should be, right? I mean, we we stole their shit, pretty they much. Just... But I'm just saying, and, and look back on. Uh, and slavery. here's something that I I found out recently that, you know, I I can't remember what which disease it was now, but you know, the big thing is like that when when the Europeans came over to the Americas that they brought chicken pox. Mm -hmm. Well. One little known fact is that the Native Americans gave the Europeans syphilis. Right. Well, when you when you meld two totally different cultures like that who have never had contact with each other, that's going to happen. 
And that's one of the things they say if aliens ever did come here, they they may bring a disease with them that could wipe us out because we wouldn't have an immuni immunity to it because you come from a whole different place. Pretty sure the Europeans only got syphilis from raping them, though. Right. Well, well yeah. But the fact of the matter is, you know, it's often said that, that we gave them or brought chicken pox when there was a disease that they had which was given back to the Europeans. By raping them. Okay, Super Richard, we get your fucking point. Uh, By raping <laughs> Just saying, man. That's hardly really... I'm not, I'm not saying that either one was, you know, done for any reason. It's just happened, Richard. <laughs> no, no, but chicken box is a communicable disease, but civil as yet, you know, the... Yeah. So no. it serves the Europeans right. Right. Well, when you that rape somebody. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. Okay, good. I yeah. wish all rapists would get syphilis. I mean, <laughs> or something. <laughs> yeah. It'd be great. Well, they get the shit kicked out of them in prison, so. Yeah, that's, that's not a good crime to go for. Hmm. I, w I wouldn't well, want to be in prison for that. Uh, sure. There was another question. So you don't think that think that the world connection is aliens, then what is it? Well, I kind of uh, um, touched on that when I was talking about the other thing. I think that that the people of the ancient world were much more well-traveled than we thought. I think they got around a lot better than mm -hmm. what what uh, history would tell us. You know, I don't think that Christopher Columbus or even the Vikings were the first... Uh, human even, beings to travel ocean. across the ocean. Well, obviously they weren't. We had Native Americans here, and they didn't. They weren't from here originally. They came from somewhere else. They came from Asia, right? For so sure. obviously, um, they were more well traveled than we give credit for. Yeah, I mean they didn't just appear here one day. You know, but there's a there's. I think there's a lot about the history of the world that is very unknown and to and, automatically say it was aliens. Yeah. I mean, could, could it have, could it, could it have been? been? Sure. Absolutely. But I tend to think, you know, if it was aliens, I tend to think we were the aliens. I'd have to almost agree with that. You know, I've, I've stated this on the show before. There's a, there's a book series and I won't say it's a great book series um, by Anne McCaffrey. Um, the Dragon Riders of Pern. And you start reading this series, and it's very kind of fantasy-oriented. There's not much science fiction to it at all in the very beginning. Um, you know, these people are on this, this world. They ride dragons to stop the, this stuff called Thread, which comes down from the sky from these uh, uh, planetary bodies that come into orbit with their planet every so often. But as you read through the series later on, you realize that these people crash landed on this planet thousands and thousands and thousands of years prior and wound up uh, genetically breeding these dragons to be able to fight this stuff called Thread. And they had forgotten that this was, was what had happened. Well, look at, look at uh, history... I was watching a documentary last night about these people who were stranded on an island and they forgot how to make rafts. Uh, they, they couldn't make a radio, none of that stuff. Uh, Gilligan had to climb a, a coconut tree. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> but if you think about it, I'll start it, doing the voice again, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> this guy named Jonas Grumby was the skipper, and he he was pretty cool. But I mean, they had a professor there because she's but, got a great ass. <laughs> I'm just saying, though, it kind of would. They lost all their technology, and how do you go about making that technology again with stuff you don't have? And that that is completely plausible that that's what happened in the ancient times. We don't know. I mean, but we had religions that say that gods came from the sky. Of course, the sky is unknown, so it could have just been made up shit. We don't know. 
but maybe we came from the sky originally. Maybe. Who knows? I guess I, I know one thing. We're never going to know. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, ne we're never going to. There's nothing that's going to be able to say, yes, this is exactly how it happened. We're never going to know that answer. The professor and Mary Ann. <laughs> Great shit, man. Mm, Great shit. I watched the unaired um, pilot. And there was a different Marianne, and there was a different. Um, I thought you were going to say Mr. Hands. And there was a different professor, too. But Gilligan and the Howells and the Skipper were all the same. Good uh -huh. stuff. I didn't watch it. Uh -huh. It's on Daily Motion. That's the only place I could find it. Huh. So, dear listeners, that be our tale of Charles Fort. Steve, are you be ending the show? News. What the, what what the fuck? Is he ending the show? I thought that was yeah. your job. I, I I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> I think he, he I, does I, his fancy uh, voice and thinks he's got all this power and shit. I know. I'm just fucking with him because he ruined my urban video game myth show. Oh yeah. Yeah. What else would you have liked me to do with that? Uh, I actually enjoyed that show. It's one of my favorites. Actually, not turned it into a shit show and you know engaged with the topic hey listen i, I re-listened to that show and oh, i fucking laughed my ass off <laughs> well i'm glad you had fun oh i did <laughs> and then richard came back for more so i love it <laughs> apparently there's a special occasion we're supposed to mention oh yeah uh happy birthday occasion. Happy um, birthday. <laughs> We're not <laughs> no, going to you. You know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to say, but you know who you are. Congratulations <laughs> on your milestone. That's right. <laughs> well done. We're yeah. behind you. Woo. <laughs> well. Whatever it is you did, you rock. Oh, no, it's about the five-year anniversary. We mentioned that last week. Yeah, that was last we? week. Yeah. Keep up with the show. Yeah, come on, people. This is, uh, uh, I mean, you know, what do I got to force feed you this shit? <laughs> Christ on a pony. <clears throat> yes. Three-hour tour. I'm sorry. I'm still on the Gilligan thing. <laughs> we're, we're not doing a fucking three-hour tour. We should do a whole show on Gilligan's Island and how that was uh, a bag of horse shit show. No, it was really it was actually written originally as a, a political statement. To you see know what? what I would like that whole idea. Why don't you do a bunch of research about it and then next week we'll do that. It was written as a political statement on what would happen if you threw a bunch of people together on an island that didn't know each other and from different socioeconomic statuses. That was actually what why that show was written. Now, of course, it was a comedy, but it was very poorly executed. If that was the case, but seriously, yeah, or, you poorly watch, executed. You watch all the shows. That's you the do all the show research, on TV. and yeah. we'll do that next week. Did you know in the original, uh, pi not the pilot, but the original um, first episode? If you look closely in the opening credits, the the flag is at half mast. Can you tell me why? You can't. No, no, Steve. Because they started filming uh -huh. the day that JFK was assassinated, and they had to hold off filming for a couple of days, but the flag was still at half mast, so you can see it in the, in the opening credits. Uh huh. Uh -huh. See and, that? To, and because I, I technically have been monitoring the chat, but I've just been letting Richard go with his, you know, questions and everything. Yeah. As he sees fit, um, the five-year anniversary was. Uh, last Saturday, not this past Saturday. And we did mention it on last week's show in between mocking Richard for his topic. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not it's better about that. Point. I am no. not bitter about that at all. I am over it and moving on with my life. I'm Are still you? bitter about the Andy Kaufman show. You <laughs> make you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> you have every right to be bitter about it, Richard. I'm hoping, I'm hoping we can do the Andy Kaufman show again and that I can manage to get Matt on the show to do the exact same thing again. You will find that difficult because I will be with Steve on that. <laughs> yeah. 
Hit, have now fun, that, that, have fun that trying that to bowl been, over Matt Knapp. <laughs> Richard's been on the receiving end. He knows what it's like <sighs> now. <laughs> I challenge you. It's all fun and games till somebody gets an eye poke. You out. get fucking Matt Knapp and I together, and I fucking challenge you. Oh no, there's no getting through that. No, you'll lose. Everybody, there's anybody fuck, would lose. There's a guy that I don't even have to talk to to fucking team up with when it comes to shit like that. Him and I just are on the same wavelength. That's pretty scary, to be honest. I know, because you couldn't find two people that are more fucking opposite. But you put them on, on camera together and bam! We're on well, not air. even on camera, on air together. Yeah, on air together, yeah. Well, actually, I think you could find two people who are more opposite. I'm, I'm pretty opposite of you. Not nearly as much as Matt and I are. Oh, come on. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, Matt and I have a lot in common, but, you know, for the record, like, you know, he's a, he's a staunch conservative Republican. I'm very left-leaning dom- Democratic. Oh, you are? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I'm very liberal. I, I figured that out pretty quickly. Yeah. <laughs> As you should have. I'm actually a registered independent, but. I am. Well, I'm not. Yeah, we don't register in Ohio. <clears throat> but, um, yeah. And hit, our viewpoints are very different. Uh, Matt Matt's very re- has very much a belief in uh, in God and religion, and I don't. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're, we're just two opposite ends of the spectrum uh, guys that were able to come together and not hate each other. Really, and, that, and that's something that I think is lacking in today's day and age. I know a guy uh, who does um, the reselling videos, like I I do on my other channel, and he's that way. He's very religious, and but his best friend is an atheist, and they get it. They get along famously. There's no problems, you know. Yeah, and, I, and like, like I said, I think that's half the problem in this country right now. Is that it's too much of they're the problem that and no no they're the problem when it's just a matter of sitting down and having honest discussions. You know, I don't know how many times I see these fucking posts on Facebook about how Democrats are ruining the world, about how fucking Republicans are ruining the world. How about we're all ruining the world? Agreed. You know, how about we stop fucking pointing fingers and just fucking fix it not gonna happen how about that <clears throat> I think that's exactly what Char- Charles Fort would have said hmm. and uh, he, he to, 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 he did, did to answer uh, and I'm, ass- I'm assuming it's Russ Mock Richard is that who asked that question uh, crypto yeah yeah to answer your question Russ how can Matt be so skeptical and knowledgeable about logic and be so religious? It's because he's not a fucking moron. That's how. But yeah, what you said about having conversations and stuff is very true. I mean, half the time if you get into an argument with someone, it can be resolved by just sitting down and talking it out with that with them. I mean, look at Star Wars. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, if Luke and Vader had just sat down and talked out their differences, you know, we wouldn't have got Return of the Jedi and we wouldn't have got Ewoks. And let's face yeah. it, Ewoks suck. They should have talked it out. I like Absolutely. Ewoks. Though. Ewoks are cute. And, and that's what's wrong with you. But they're cute and fuzzy and they walk funny. They are the worst things that ever happened to the Star Wars franchise. Uh, it, was, no, it, not. it was supposed to be a Wookiee planet, Steve. Well, Jar 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 Binks. Other than Hayden Christensen. Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar Binks was not as bad as Hayden Christensen. At least Jar Jar Binks could act. (laughs) (laughs) Jar Jar Binks was a fucking CGI character. That's what I was going to (laughs) say. Oh, shit. (sighs) Well, this show was going along fine until we got that UK guy. You know, the so 
If we would have just sat too late in the show for me to bring back the voice, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I, although, Richard, I, I would like to point out that um, you and uh, Tim Fasano trying to talk it out didn't work out <laughs> so well. No. No, that didn't, right. that didn't go over well. <laughs> Racist fat cunt. <laughs> Why would you call yourself that? I know, right? Hey, 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 shut up. Is that all you got? That's all I need, all right? I don't need to justify that kind of shit. I mean, listening to some fucking over-the-hill, useless waste of space... <laughs> Telling me about my country's policies. <laughs> it's just a fucking waste of two hours. Okay. Of my how uh, um, how do you feel about uh, Donald Trump? <laughs> you see. I just feel like that, you know, maybe if he just put down his phone and got off Twitter, people would take him more seriously. You racist bastard, you. What does that even mean? How know. can you even do that? <laughs> He's racist against orange people. I'm, I'm racist uh, no. against phones. I mean, <laughs> you don't meddle in our country's business, Richard. You asked my opinion. No, no it I doesn't matter. You asked Tim Fasano's Tim Fasano, opinion. his opinion on my country. All right, talking about fucking Nigel Farage and Tommy <laughs> Robinson. What a fucking God! I want to punch him in his fat piggy face. By the way, next week I think uh, we're gonna have Tim back on. <laughs> <laughs> just it's just gonna be Tim and Richard. Chris and I are gonna take a back seat. The debate you know. continues. Oh, that'd be an awesome show. I'd listen. Uh, I you would be Tim happy to talk to him together. as long as we didn't talk about politics. I don't know. You and Tim should be a, you should do a political show together. No, we shouldn't. Oh God, that would be awesome. It would not be awesome. Yes, it, would it would be would. me calling him a cunt. It'd and be YouTube explaining. gold. I can just imagine the revenue you guys get from that. All of 39p. <laughs> oh, dear God. I just saw a question in the chat room. Oh, dear God. Yeah, I, I was going to not read that one out. Oh, God. Why, is it not appropriate for the show? I'm not allowed in the chat room, so. Well, uh, oh, good reason. You are not since the incident. You are not allowed in the chat. Yeah, we, yeah exactly. We talk about the incident. Uh, what What about Reverend Jeff? What about him? Uh, well, somebody brought it up, so I'm just curious. What What's the, What's the point? What's the is, question? Is there a question? I'm or, assuming there is some type of a question, but the person who posed the question didn't exactly i did exactly what you you were uh, speaking of earlier reverend jeff and i had a, a discussion and we worked out our differences and now we don't talk to each other so <laughs> nothing bad i mean he plays the same game on facebook i do and we send coins to each other oh uh, Re uh, reverend jeff will not come on our show no no, no he won't we yeah, try. the question has been posed he will not come on no. And the reason he won't come on is because he knows that I'll fucking tear him down to pieces. Well, maybe he won't come on because he thinks he'll tear you down to pieces. No. No, because if he thought that, then he would come on. Yeah, I the think fact so. of the matter is, is that he doesn't have a fucking leg to stand on. But it's all ancient history anyway. I mean, there's nothing. I mean, I think most of us have gotten over that, right? Oh, yeah. No, I mean, I... Yeah. But he can go on and do his bullshit and enjoy. Mm -hmm. That's a good question, Steve. Hmm. What? What's the question? What? A Tim Fasano, Richard Allen debate political show, but we both have to use the pirate voice. Oh, yeah. Tim, Tim, Tim couldn't hold on to it. No, no, I don't think he could. You're right. Wait, wait, is Russ really asking that question? And is that uh, in reference to Jeff? Yeah, I believe so. Do we not get along and why? Have you not been a fan of this show? Come on, Russ. You've been around for a long time. You know the story. 
I think maybe Russ is just trying to dig up some shit. Is he being cheeky? I think, I don't think so. he's being cheeky. No, it's, it's ancient history, man. <coughs> it's ancient history. We do it's ancient, want to it's, dredge up the past. It's ancient history, but here's the, here's the fact of the matter. The reason that we don't get along is because Jeff put out a or put on a paid Bigfoot outing. And the minute that he did it, I told him that I didn't agree with it. He knew for a fact that we didn't agree with paid Bigfoot outings. That they're a bag of horse shit. Yeah. And the minute that they got back from that outing, they saw a, someone saw a Bigfoot. They had. It never happened, by the way. What's Stelio, that? Stelio Contos. Stelio Contos and his fucking his uh, Bigfoot video that no one ever saw because somehow it mysteriously disappeared. Yeah, whatever happened to him? Yeah, uh, exactly. He disappeared. <laughs> Shortly after the event. I saw it. He, he and put it on and, and the, for the fact of the matter is, you know, uh, when Jeff got back from that outing, his exact words to me were, dude, it stood and looked at me in my hammock. And this is based on the fact that they found a fucking footprint, supposedly, up on a ridge or somewhere that was pointed in his direction. When come to find out, it was more than likely David Batdorf's footprint. And they tried to cast it with basically nothing because they didn't have anything to cast footprints with. Yeah, didn't he use toothpaste and like soggy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they went on a fucking Bigfoot outing, a paid Bigfoot outing, with nothing to do any type of research with. Which is ninety percent of what Bigfoot outings are. <laughs> Paid Bigfoot just sit and camp, basically. Generally, yeah. and smoke yeah. weed, and drink booze. Which there's nothing wrong with that. Just don't call no, it just, Bigfoot outing. Yeah, just say you're out in the woods camping and smoking weed and drinking booze. Yeah. I think we should. Uh, have my beef with the Jeff mix. was totally different than your beef with Jeff. I didn't have any beef over that because I didn't know any much about that. You know. Well, mine, mine was totally different. We've worked it out, so we're good. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know what yours was in reference to, and I think I was exactly correct. But whatever. Yeah, I that didn't really have a beef with Jeff. <clears throat> yeah, and if Jeff wanted to message me on Facebook today and talk to him, you know, I have no problem with that. Mm. So. Now, I was accused of just following the leader here, but there was just two events happening at the same time. But or was that leader? Was that leader me? Well, yeah, you're always the bad guy, no matter what. Even if you even if you went on vacation for six months and something happened three months after you went on vacation, you'd still be the bad guy. Even if you fought the devil, you'd be the bad guy. Yeah, no matter what, you'd be the bad guy. So wait, wait. So that was after you and Jeff went bigfooting with Shane Corson. Yes, and Shane wasn't really there for much of that. What ever happened to Shane Corson, by the way? Don't know. Is he still around? I don't I think it was before Sarah Brown went insane as well. Yes. It was well <sighs> before Sarah Brain went. Uh, Sarah, Sarah Brain. Sarah Brown yeah. went insane. Sarah's brain did go insane. Whatever happened to them? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whatever <laughs> happened thing. to them? Here's the thing. Um, We've been I'm doing pretty this sure they're for... in a mental hospital somewhere. Yeah. We've been doing this show for five years. We've been friends for what six or seven now yeah and we've seen a lot of people come and go a yes. lot 90 percent of the people who were around when we first met each other are gone or are doing something else or whatever or have uh, gotten really quiet or yeah it so just, it, it's it the way it happens a lot about, it tells you a lot about what they were really in it for it wasn't because they wanted to find some ape in the woods somewhere or some mystical being because you know, they a lot of this, a lot of this is flash in the pan shit. Yeah. 
And so we, we might be a little jaded, but that's why, because we've seen it. We've seen it for the last six or seven years. We know what goes on in this. I've, I've watched more. I've watched more people come and go in this, in this, uh, in the Bigfoot genre than I care to talk about. And people that I actually cared about, to be honest with you. Sure. You know, well, the smart uh, ones get in and out, don't they? No, not necessarily the smart no. ones, Richard. No, um, it doesn't. That has nothing to do with intelligence. You can't put well, the community and smart in the same sentences. Well, you know what I mean. Things. The ones that that want to make their money, they get in, they get out. Like Sean Evidence, Rosa Hebe, people like that. Here today, gone tomorrow. Came in, did their thing, left. Yeah, you're right. In I mean, that aspect, they're the, they're the small ones in, in, in that opinion. aspect, well, they didn't really make any money. The documentary was pretty much a flop. <clears throat> but yeah, Roe went on to do like other shit. Didn't they they, well, they made the, listen. They made money on a website, not on this shit. Yeah. Oh yeah. The Bigfoot Evidence website was the no. Shit. It, w- it wasn't the Bigfoot Evidence website. With Mulder's World. Mulder's World was it? Yes. They. They. Uh, you know. No, that's I don't, still going I don't know all the details. It's all but Mulder, Mulder's world was sold. Hmm. And Mulder's and then, world was similar to what Charles Fort did. It just and then they and then they turned around and tried to make a platform in which they could sell off web pages. Right. And that kind of fell flat on its face. But Sean went on to do a very successful uh, political website. I don't know if I'm allowed to mention it or not. Sure, why not? So, but, I know, can't remember what it was called. But the was... Community. They did their websites, did their documentaries, and then they left. And not just oh, those on. two. There were Sean others. made a shit ton of money on Bigfoot Evidence. Right, shit but ton. not just those two. Like Lots of people like that did that. Timber Giant Bigfoot was one of those. Came he in, made a shit ton out. of money on YouTube. Until yep. the YouTube rules changed, and then he disappeared. You know, mm-hmm. I don't it's, understand it's amazing why. to me I mean, how many people disappeared. Why did you set up a Patreon account? Because there's not enough of a pool of people to make any money. I'm telling you, there's not a lot of money in it unless you're first. If you're first at something, like Sean was the first to have. It's sort of, it's sort of like a pyramid scheme. If right. you're the person at the top, you can make money. Sean was the first with that kind of blog. I mean, there was other blogs about and around, and but they'd never really focused on what Sean did. And Sean allowed... Which was letting people talk right. shit on your fucking page. But it was a great business decision on his end. Oh, yeah. And, and he and I talked about that. And I said, don't... If you want to make money, don't you dare turn off the comment into your blog. Because that's what the... You know, because that's... If that's what you're in it for, which I knew he was... After some time, you know, at first I didn't realize it, but when once I come to, I talk to him about it. I'm like, dude, <laughs> keep it the way it is, or or you're or it's going to shut down mm-hmm. because nobody will go there again. One, and that's why Bigfoot Evidence left it the way it was. And because so many people are going to make some money. So many people have bitched about that. And so many people go Steven, there. Just Steven Stroyfer is one of the still biggest. Biggest. <laughs> Who Stupid just go just there to argue with Stephen Struford. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, uh, my my ex is one of the ones that bitched about that. I tell Constantly. you, I, when I was doing my own blog and my own thing and Sean would repost my articles, people would say some horrible shit about me. Guess what I didn't do? Read it. I could care less what they were saying as long as they were visiting my website. You know? They're still saying that stuff, Steve. Oh, yeah, and that's fine. They can and, all go to hell, and but I don't say, care. People say horrid shit on our fucking shows every once in a while. Right. I'll, I'll read them, but I don't fucking take it to heart. I just sit there and fuck with them. I think we learned not? a long time ago not to worry about what people say about us. Yeah, I don't fucking worry about it. I just engage them, because the more they engage on the friggin' post, the better off it'll do. The thumbs only up, thing down, down, it's the all the same. No being talked about is being talked about. Yeah. Oscar Wilde said that, so you know it's legit. But I think we've uh, beat that shit into the ground. So, uh, Steve, do you have any news? Yep. Be there any news? 
Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Is that the new in news intro, Richard? Last week we we talked about Germany not having a, a plan uh, for alien contact. So after Germany, re this is from the Express, by the way. Uh, after Germany rebuilt, it has no contingency plans ready in the event of first contact with aliens. A former Ministry of Defense uh, insider told Express.co.uk nations are making a big mis mistake. By not make. You know who this guy was? Nick frickin' Pope, who won't come on our show. Nick Pope, who worked for the British government between 1985 and 2006, uh, doing who knows what, has claimed neither of the UK nor any other country is truly prepared for whatever may be lurking in the void of space. And what be, be lurking in the void of space, Steve? Can we make him walk the fucking plank? <laughs> oh, believe me, it's going to happen. <laughs> Between 1991 and 94, Mr. Pope examined UFO sightings for the mod in a bid to determine if they had any defense-related significance. I want, I want his life to end like uh, the the side comic, the Tales from the Black Freighter. Am I am I saying it wrong? Is it mod or should I say M O D, Richard? Ye should say M O D. The mod pulled the plug on the UFO project in 2009, and Mr. Are Pope fucking belly. <laughs> Mr. Pope has since extensively <laughs> toured the world giving lectures. And I hope seminars. you fucking choke to death. Think of your esophagus. <laughs> death by pirate voice. That's the way I want to go out. <laughs> Mr. Pope has said uh, people are quick to dismiss calls for the creation of contingency plans. He told the And why are they quick to dispute dismiss that? He said, I was interested, but not surprised to see Don't that Germany has no too official much there, asshole. what to do in the event of encountering extraterrestrials. The UK doesn't have a plan either. Nobody does. And I think it's a big mistake. People Why respond, is it a big mistake? People respond to the suggestion of a plan in two ways. Skeptics say it's a waste of time, while conspiracy theorists say there is a plan, but the government isn't telling Listen, us. Listen, if fucking aliens show up, their technology is going to be far superior to ours. No plan we have is going to matter. Right. Ye be wrong. They be abducting us to put us on YouTube. Wow. Anyway, <sighs> Mr. Pope thinks everybody should have a plan, and nobody does. Not a good one, anyway. Nah. Man spots mysterious Mothman in the skies of West Virginia. Holy hell. The Mothman? IB Times, which is a really good, you know, <clears throat> international business times, I think, is the... Name of this one's for you, Chris, because I know you like the moth map. An Fuck eerie man. video recently submitted to MUFON, or the Mutual UFO Network, for those who are not in the They want to catch him. They just got to put a big light on. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Did a it was better when Matt Knapp said it. No, uh, Matt Knapp said a giant bug zapper. Same thing. Yeah, I'm saying it was better. An eerie video recently submitted to MUFON <laughs> has now emerged as the hottest point of debate among conspiracy theorists and alien enthusiasts. The short clip shows a mysterious UFO hovering across the skies, and interestingly, the object spotted seems very similar to the mythical Mothman, which many believe the mythical Mothman is a rarity. Here reality. to prophesize things in a way that only Fallout 3 can rival. The incident apparently happened in West My Virginia. My only hope is that the Mothman shows up in your town. The incident apparently happened in West Virginia, widely considered or widely considered a UFO hotspot by conspiracy theorists. The video of the spooky spooky incident was later shared to YouTube by conspiracy theory channel UFO Mania. Oh god. Where it gained popularity. Most of the people who watched the clip argue that the strange object in the skies might be an alien UFO from deep space. Because most of those people are idiots. As per these theorists, aliens might have visited the Earth just a few days before the century's longest blood mood. Uh, conspiracy theorists also reveal that aliens have been visiting Earth for hundreds of thousands of years, and they now are apparently gearing up for disclosure. Did it sound any more unenthused about this story? It's the Mothman, Steve. It's an alien spaceship that looks like the Mothman. Exactly. Haven't you never seen like Batman into the future comics? That's the Mothman's ship. Right, he's he's upgraded. 
He's I got see. like an Aurora space bomber shit, and he's flying around places, delivering hey, well, prophecies. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This story gets better now. The new sighting came just a few hours after another UFO sighting uh, was reported in West Virginia. In that event, uh, it happened at night, and an interdimensional like portal opened in the skies, which made, uh, which made, which many thought was an uh, alien craft. Others have argued that time travelers are using these portals to visit the past and the future. If you want to know anything Sounds about West good. Virginia, just fucking watch the wild and wonderful whites of West Virginia. That's all I gotta say. This story has everything. Time Ooh. travel, UFOs, Mothman. How can ye be not an enthused? Here's a here's a great uh, website to go to for Fordian stories. South China Morning Post. Yeah. <laughs> There's no pirates in China. Dreamers, well, crackpots, are, <laughs> crackpots are realists. The diehards are on the trail of China's Bigfoot. <sighs> China's got a Bigfoot? Apparently. It was nearly 40 years ago, but Juan Wahau... Is, is he a communist? Juan Wahau remembers his brush with China's answer to Bigfoot like it was yesterday. It was about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the former soldier recalled of the day in 1981, when his expedition in northwest Hubei province was interrupted by the sight of a black, red, humanoid animal walking upright on a Did the juvenile mouse. Bigfoots get fucking chained to desks and made to fucking sew clothing? I don't know. Be cool, little foot in China. Its speed was very fast, but it was walking, not running, Juan said. You uh, on. I'm going to call it Power Juan. walking. At the, <laughs> as the creature ranged across the mountain in Fang County, bordering the Shanghai to forest, the, uh, yeah, it walked faster than any human ran. Uh, Yuan quickly loaded his rifle and took dead aim at the figure, but before he could pull the trigger, his colleague intervened. Don't you dare shoot, uh, Yuan recalled his colleague saying. If you do, and it turns out to be human, you've wounded or killed, and not a year, and what will happen then? Now, this reads as good as Richard's story earlier. The beast continued up the peak and disappeared behind a cliff. What was wrong with me story earlier? The chat room loved it. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, like the there, of, therein lies the fucking problem. If the, if the fans of the show yes. love it, then we know we've done something Ooh, wrong. Fuck. Uh, anyway, I I don't even. This story's stupid. I was made by Dean Cooper, so. <laughs> Dean Cooper wrote this story? I, I believe so. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. <laughs> you, you seriously <laughs> gave that fucking asshole a platform? Uh, Dean Cooper did He's not. He's one of our story. biggest fans, Chris. We should give him some love. The, be <laughs> the uh, beast continued up a peak and disappeared behind Should we? Point, according to you on. Like the fabled uh, Sasquatch of North American folklore and mythic, uh, and the mythical Yeti or abominable snowman <laughs> of Himalaya, the legend of the year and meaning wild man is alive and where a uh, well in Shin and uh, Twas a deed China. after all. Twas his parrot what wrote the story. Mm. Ah, I see. I'm done with that story anyway. So some Chinese guy thinks he saw a wild man in 1981 and took, it was going to take a shot at it, and his friend said no. E the end. How convenient. Tis like the Justin Smeha line. No. Uh, Smeha actually took the shot, even though his no, friend said didn't. no. he did Well, he says he did. Yar, he be talking bollocks. From the sun. Spooked mum. Whoa, the sun. Spooked the mum believes sun. she has a masturbating ghost living in her house. And people are Ghost convinced there is no story. other explanation. They never get old. <laughs> From a mysterious bump in the... See, you weren't really a pirate earlier, but then it kind of transformed into a pirate. Yeah, it's, it's I, don't, I don't know funny. what happened. <laughs> I, I found an accent I could actually do and stuck with it. I disagree. <laughs> yeah. From Your a mysterious... mom not. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, okay, whatever. From a serious of the night to an eerily <laughs> weepy door, we've all convinced ourselves our home is haunted at one point or another. But now one woman has blown all of the ordinary fears out of the water by became, 
by claiming her house is being haunted by a spunking, I guess that's another word for masturbating, spunking. ghost. A spunking. Mm. Uh, yes, you read that. Uh, you heard that correctly. I'm reading. You're hearing. <clears throat> talking to the <laughs> talking to the mum's net to share her bizarre dilemma. The anonymous uh, user described how her partner was woken up around 1 a.m. the night before because he heard their squeaky bedroom door open. So far, spooky. Uh, but because he was expecting our nocturnal son to tap him on the shoulder, announcing he had a bad dream. The couple didn't immediately stir. When he heard the door close again, the woman's partner then got out of bed and went to check on their son. But instead of coming across his frightened child in the hallway, <laughs> the parent was instead greeted by a large wet patch in the middle of the floor. <laughs> Would you call that ectoplasm ghost chism? <laughs> well, no. we know what, uh, surely the logical conclusion would be the uh, scared little boy had an accident where the dog simply uh, however the user's partner then found her son fast asleep all tucked in his duvet while the dog was also fast asleep in the living room so naturally naturally it had the mother to be, it had to be ghost only, jism the only explanation explanation she could think of jism. is that she has a masturbating ghost yeah yeah, makes sense to me. Yep, definitely. I I, I agree. I, I think that's the only logical conclusion. Masturbating ghost sex stories. They be the future. Anyway, gentlemen, that is in fact the news. Mm. Bollocks every four. That was all of them. I read all four. Yeah, why don't you pay attention, you pirate asshole? He was trying to do this stupid pirate accent. Uh, he lost count. Me be yeah, just count. jelly that you cannot do the pirate accent. R. There we go. See, I did it. Damn. That put me in my place. <laughs> uh, Can we end this? Can we just end this now? Uh, <laughs> it's one of those things where like, I just don't want to. <laughs> Cause I want to see how long he'll fucking go. I can go all night. Just ask <laughs> me, ex-girlfriend. <laughs> uh, you don't want that. <laughs> no, you don't want that. <laughs> oh shit, Richard. Some weeks. Uh, well, now I feel I've got appropriate vengeance for ye ruining me show last week. I don't think that was much of a ven venge vengeful thing. It's just you talking like a pirate. Then I will take the accent for every show in the future. <laughs> and we'll see how long you last. <laughs> You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> we be doing demonic possession next week, in case you were wondering. We, we we be doing that? I, me and Chris did discuss it earlier in the week. I see. Uh, <laughs> Demonic uh, possession. Uh, are you, or we are could you... do the Gilligan's Island one. No. <laughs> no. No, we're not doing the Gilligan's Island one. <sighs> so, thank you for listening to this week's 40 and Slip. <laughs> we'll be back next week. Same slip time, same slip channel. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Different producer. <laughs> yeah, different <laughs> producer is right. Thank you, Steve. This has been the 40 and Slip, episode 40. Charles Fort in charge. If you like this shit, hit the little thumbs up button. If you don't, hit the little thumbs down button. Leave a comment. Subscribe. Uh, check out Matt Knapp at youtube.com forward slash Bigfoot Crossroads. Check out Richard's comic strip, I'm an Asshole, on Facebook. Big fucking with Keith and <sighs> Colin, you scurvy cunt. Uh, <laughs> yes, and put in scurvy cunt so that you can make sure you find it. Uh, check out Dreadfun at dreadfun.com and youtube.com forward slash dreadfun. Check out Para Breakdown. None of his videos are monetized. <laughs> youtube.com forward slash para breakdown and some yes, say you lost a battle of wits with uh, me brother 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back next week with the demonic possession episode. In a pirate voice. <laughs> Without a producer with a pirate voice. <laughs> <laughs> See ya!